Who is the most powerful, richest and the most insane world leader? You're probably thinking of Russia's Putin or the Saudi royal family. They're of course powerful and wealthy, but none of them hold as much power as the Sultan of Brunei, Hassan al Bolkai, who lives in a completely different world that's separated from the reality. Every king or queen would envy him. He would put to shame Forbes' richest people because, unlike others, his wealth isn't based on some stocks and shares in the stock market, but real cash, real power, and unbelievable level of influence. He lives better than the king of seven kingdoms of Westeros. Officially, he has three wives, but he is known more as the Playboy Sultan, because many reports leak that the Sultan has a harem of 40 young women at any given time. I think he never gets bored. His palace was named world's largest residential palace by Guinness World Records. The palace contains 1788 rooms, including 257 bathrooms, a banquet hall that can be expanded to accommodate up to 5000 guests, a private mosque. At the end of the day, he is a sultan, he needs to illustrate the importance of religion. The palace also includes a 110 car garage, an air conditioned stable for sultan's 200 polo ponies, and 5 swing pools. In total, the palace contains 2.1 million square feet of floor space and has 564 chandeliers and 18 elevators. For God's sake, why would you have 18 elevators? I mean, why would you have 1700 rooms in the first place? Can someone let me know in the comments below, please? The total cost of the palace is estimated to be around 1.5 billion dollars. Yes, that is with a B. Aren't you impressed yet? The palace might not have a huge garage since it can only park 110 cars, but the Sultan is known for his love for cars. I mean, I love cars too, but his love is beyond anyone's imagination. The Sultan has a total number of 7,000 cars. What? Yes, you heard me right, 7,000. He has pretty much every car that exists in the world. But he wanted something special, something that no one would have except him. So he ordered a customized gold Rolls Royce that has a price tag of 14 million dollars. I guess that's what happens when you have more money than you can possibly spend. His collection of cars include a Lamborghini Murcielago LP640, Bentley Continental R, Ferrari Mythos concept car, both of the Ferrari 456 GT sedans, the only right-handed drive Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR in the world, and 5 McLaren F1S, and 500 more Rolls Royces. His car collection worth 5 billion dollars. Just to let you know that Brunei's GDP is 13.5 billion dollars. His car collection is 40% of country's total GDP. It's like Trump having a collection of cars worth 8 trillion dollars. There is an entire page on Wikipedia on his collection of cars. The more you buy, the more you want to spend, I guess. It's a never ending cycle. That's why the Sultan didn't limit himself to one mansion, but has another 150 mansions all around the world, starting from LA to London and the rest of the world. When you spend $20,000 on a single haircut, paying the bills shouldn't be a problem for you. When you're so rich you can't limit yourself to cars, you need planes to be able to visit your 150 mansions. The Sultan bought himself his own Boeing 747. The plane costs at least 400 million dollars and it's rumored that he spent another 120 million dollars decorating it with gold. He loves planes so much that he gifted his daughter an Airbus A340 for her birthday. I mean, I can't even imagine how did that go. My little daughter, you know what, I didn't know what to get you on your birthday, so on my way home back from work, I did a little shopping and I got you an Airbus A340. Forgive me for that weird accent. 
He also has a Boeing 747-400 and a couple of other small planes. In total, the Sultan has 17 private planes. But you are not a real Sultan until you have a floating palace in the sea. Yes, I'm talking about a yacht. A mega yacht. The yacht that goes by the name Tits was originally purchased by his brother Jeffrey, but later was seized by him. The yacht is 180 feet long, big enough for his harem of 40 women. Marble floors, gold furnishings and elevators connecting the decks, these are just a few of the luxury amenities of the yacht. The Sultan has a total number of 10 yachts. Now that we know that he lives such a lavish lifestyle that it's difficult to comprehend for most of us. Let's find out what exactly gets the money to pay for all of that. At the end of the day, Brunei is not a Singapore to be so rich to pay for such a luxurious lifestyle. The Sultan was born on 15 of July 1946 in Istana Darus Salam, which is the capital of Brunei. He received high school education at Victoria Institution in Kuala Lumpur, after which he attended the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, in the United Kingdom, graduating in 1967. He became the Sultan of Brunei Darus Salam on 5th of October 1967, after his father abdicated. Under Brunei's 1959 constitution, the Sultan is the head of the state with full executive authority, including emergency powers, since 1962. Since the beginning, he knew that in order for him to rule forever, he has to control the country with an iron fist. On 9th of March 2006, the Sultan was reported to have amended Brunei's constitution to make himself infallible under Brunei's law. This is probably the weirdest government in the world. He holds multiple positions within the government. He is the head of the state, he is the prime minister, he is the minister of finance, the minister of defense, the minister of foreign affairs, and I'm not kidding, it seems like he is the official minister of everything. He also appointed himself as Inspector General of Police of the Royal Brunei's Police Force. When he ran out of positions to appoint himself, he decided to make himself the head of the religion of the country. The Sultanate of Brunei is a tiny nation surrounded by Malaysia by both sides and has a population of 430,000 people. It's an all-rich country. It's almost entirely supported by exports of crude oil and natural gas, with revenues from petroleum sector accounting for over half of GDP. Brunei is the third largest oil producer in Southeast Asia, averaging about 180,000 barrels per day. It's also the ninth largest producer of liquefied natural gas in the world. Although the government provides all medical services and subsidizes food and housing, most of that wealth directly goes to the royal family, specifically to the pockets of the Sultan, since he holds all government positions. Imagine the Prime Minister trying to bribe the Minister of Finance. It might not be easy, but when you are the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance and the head of the state and the Sultan and everything else, you just keep the money in your pocket. The Brunei Investment Agency is another tool that the Sultan uses to fill his pockets. It was created to manage the General Reserve Fund of the government and all its external assets. The agency manages 40% of Brunei's foreign reserves. The fund owns a chain of luxury hotels and investment in bonds, equity, currency, gold and real estate. But the fund is generally used by the royal family to pay for their lavish lifestyle. In the 1990s, the BIA made a special transfer of $40 billion to the Sultan, making him the richest person in the entire world back then but Bill Gates surpassed him later on. Currently, his official net worth is $20 billion, which is almost 40% higher than Brunei's GDP. It's like Putin having a net worth of $2.5 trillion. His brother is also known for his lavish spendings. He received $8 billion from the government fund. Prince Jeffrey was accused of misappropriating state funds to pay for his own personal expenses, so he was removed from his position as the head of BIA. 
It seems like this family is going to keep enjoying their lavish lifestyle until the last barrel of oil will be extracted from Brunei. If you have enjoyed this video and want to know more about wealthier world leaders, do let us know in the comments below. Meanwhile, give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and subscribe for more similar videos. Thanks for watching and until next time.